we 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 work with uh, we advise and mentor and startups around solutions for uh, uh, deep learning solutions uh, and uh, yeah i i i did my btech from iit kharagpur uh, long time back and uh, yeah and phd from carnegie mellon okay so so let's see okay so there are plenty of opinions in this talk and some of them mine some of them others hope you get to enjoy them okay so start off what we are more used to when we build models we are more used to discriminative models where you know given a particular class uh, object and a class we want to figure out which class uh, an object belongs to and to distinguish generative versus discriminative uh, here are two a bunch of of uh, simple query so suppose you have to write a regular expression which matches arbitrary urls urls like the one above okay now you can think about it uh, it's pretty non trivial thing to do you have to think about all the expressions uh, https and colon and and uh, the, the main url domain name and followed by all the parts and it can have an and and equal to and so on so it, it's a pretty complex task to to write an expression or a model for for uh, the complex the whole set of urls but instead if you have to just write an regular expression which tells you if the url is secure or not okay so for that you just need to focus on the first five letters of the first five characters of the of the string the rest of it is irrelevant right and and you can build a classifier or discriminator which which just focuses on so so that's that's where the contrast is to understand a whole domain consisting of you know all kinds of objects you have to understand uh, how how these objects uh, what kinds of objects are possible what are the basic characteristics or dimensions or features of these objects and how do these features or dimensions vary and uh, yeah and only when you have full understanding of all these dimensions you can build a generated model which is much which is quite testing task uh, instead for discriminative you have you just focus on part of the model and and um, that is enough to solve a discriminative so so if you're trying to uh, to classify a natural language sentence uh, or you're trying to find uh, you know classify an image into a, one of the imaginate categories whether it's a cat or dog or car all those are discriminative tasks if you're trying to generate the whole distributions of images I mean, all kinds of images. You have want to build an engine, a model which generates all kinds of. That's what a generative model is, and, and um, you have to basically understand how, how, how you know all of these images vary in uh, what they are built of. Okay, so this famous quote from Richard Feynman. Uh, okay, you can do it. Yeah. So why why generative models? Uh, uh, you can model complex and high dimensional distributions and distributions i hope uh, everybody in the audience is slightly familiar with this talk is slightly at a, a semi technical level uh, you might if you have been playing around with neural networks a little bit uh, or or familiar with standard machine learning uh, it, that would help you understand things appreciate things better if you're not then anyway we'll we'll manage yeah <laughs> so Okay, so you can model complex stuff for fun or profit. You can, if you have a small set of data about a particular domain, and which doesn't capture all kinds of variations, you can use the generative model to, to augment that data set. And once you have a bigger set, you can use it in multiple ways. You can use it for discriminator, you can use for classifying, which is, uh, yeah. So lack of label data is, is a huge, uh, problem in several domains and, and that's where generative models really help. Uh, you can try to generate particular kind of data. You want to generate only once in the MNIST or you want to generate only, mm, you know, pictures of houses versus something else. You you can, you should be able to control the, the model to generate particular data. And also to fill in a uh, lot, lot Lot of data sets have, have observations with fields missing and a generative model which knows 
how the probability distribution across the, 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 the features is, and that should be able to interpolate or fill in missing data. OK. So uh, yeah. Uh, so mathematically speaking, a generative model captures a joint probability distribution as opposed to a discriminative model, which models conditional distribution. OK, so O1 is an observation. So, so any data set, suppose it's images. Images, it has, you know, you have uh, MNIST images, 28 by 28, OK? So 28 by 28, 764 pixels. Each of the Xs are the pixels, OK? And so, so O1 represents an observation. So the pixels, uh, Y1s are the labels. Zs are the sort of latent representation, which can help you recover X1. So, so if you, uh, so, so O1 represents a sort of complete mathematical model of a particular observation. And we, we, for different tasks, we focus on different parts of it. Okay, and what uh, the joint probability distribution is, is the joint distribution of all these variables, Xs, Ys, and Zs. Okay, for the conditional distribution, you, you sort of just focus on one class, say Yk, given a particular set of pixels, X1 to Xn. So a particular set of pixels in an image, you want to figure out whether the image contains a cat or dog. That's like, so yeah. And what we are interested in, or what a generative model is interested in, is the shape of P over the whole domain of X1 to Xn. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's a broad taxonomy of generative models. and But broadly, they should be able to do these three things, uh, sampling, estimation, and evaluate like here. Okay, so so it takes a while to understand the consequences of this simple math. Uh, so so we'll we'll take a shorter route. Here's a beautiful image from uh, Munnar coffee or tea plantations. Okay, so what uh, you know, figuratively speaking, what uh, uh, joint distribution is essentially the shape. So so you could think of the flat ground wing x and y. And every point on the flat ground, x and y, is assigned a weight, which is the sort of height of the hill, height of the hill at that point. Okay, and so when when you intuitively, so this, so this intuition at least comes very is very useful for me. Uh, so when you think of a distribution, sort of distribution of all the images, you can think of uh, multi-dimensional extension of this where there are several peaks. Uh, so, so there are points which are assigned high weights, which are the peaks, the points uh, which are which are shallow uh, valleys. Okay, and, and to capture this generative model, you have to essentially know where the peaks are. And that's where what the, the task is uh, mostly about. Okay, let's go forward. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure. So the problem with this thing is there's no feedback, and I'm not sure whether I'm going too slow or too fast, or uh, how much stuff will I be able to cover. But let's. So this is a very nice blog from openai.com, uh, which basically talks about three kinds of generative models. Uh, GANs is what we're going to talk about. VAEs, variational autoencoders, autoencoders, some of them you might be familiar with. Uh, autoencoders, I think, preceded GANs, but the the quality of generated output from GANs were much better. So, sort of, they took over VAEs in the hype cycle. Okay, and RNNs, the autoregressive models, uh, essentially, if you looked at car RNN or yeah, uh, an RNN generating a language model, in that, that that's the there's a pixel RNN which generates the image, and there's a WaveNet which generates sound. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, why why focus on GANs a uh, lot? One of the reasons. So, this is this is snapshot of the original paper there. Um, yeah. So, the first person, Ian Goodfellow, is 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 labeled as the inventor, and the rest of them are forgotten. Okay. So, yeah. So, why do you? Uh, focus on uh, well, Jan Lekun, who's the director of uh, Facebook AI Research Lab, uh, made a very strong statement that GANs 
the most interesting idea in the last 10 years and under which uh, yeah so uh, it's a pretty new model and the the amount of variations uh, the, the 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 creativity around gans is is you can you can play around with that model and do lots of stuff yeah but uh, the same person uh, also you know wraps with uh, on twitter about on the hashtag feel the learn so so maybe uh, yeah so anyway we'll focus on dance and yeah this is the high level overview okay uh, the setting is that the two entities generator generator and a discriminator okay and uh, the generative part takes in a random vector as input and creates an object of the domain. So most of the talk, I'll, I'll use an image as the object we want to generate. And the thing applies to actually data from any domain. But um, yeah, we'll use image also because most of the work around GANs has focused on images. Okay, So taking a random vector, generator creates an image, sort of a candidate that generator guesses. And then there's a discriminator, which uh, which tells, which serves an oracle and tells the generator that the, this image actually belongs to the distribution or not. It's an actual image or not. So, so putting it simply, generator tries to fake it many times. It tries to create many fake images, present it to the uh, discriminator, and discriminator scores them or, or throws them away or rejects them. And uh, based on the feedback from discriminator, the generator is able to create good images or real images eventually. So that's the short summary and we'll keep revisiting that. Yeah, and there are plenty of applications to image generation, translation, text generation, speech generation, and uh, yeah, nothing stops you from using the same uh, mechanism to generate data from any distribution. Okay, so uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so see here are some some examples. So the the distribution, uh, the, the 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 framework architecture sort of reminds you of, of the Turing test, uh, and 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 it's a, it's a sort of operational model for, for the Turing test where the generator just creates stuff, and and eventually its goal is to create stuff that is accepted by the the man behind the mirror or, or the curtain. Uh, which is this real stuff okay so so plenty of applications there there's a huge uh, there has been a huge flurry of research starting from the when the, when the first paper was published uh, all all kinds of stuff uh, and it's it's hard to cover all kinds of stuff in any presentation in gans i'll be picking and uh, talking about a few of them okay uh, so this one let me see if i can yeah so, so this is this sort of shows you the the images that are being generated by uh, by GANs. Uh, this one at the top uh, shows you translation done by GANs. So, so on the left side is, for example, a satellite view of of a, a map, and the right side is the road, other roads. Okay, or or you have edges too. You have an edge edge based you know picture of a of a bag and that the gan can translate into uh, a colored real looking bag okay and bottom is yeah you, you start from sentence a uh, table with many plates of foods and drinks and right side is the image okay so so these are pretty uh, pretty difficult tasks to do and and the, the GAN framework is able to achieve uh, all of these varied kind of tasks. Yeah, so remember, so the generator, uh, starting from, say, a natural language sentence, the generator creates an image and, and gives it distributor. Distributor rejects several of them, and slowly the generator learns to get the right image. It's, it's part of the training process. OK, yeah, so. Yeah, there's very interesting work on IGANs, uh, which are 
interactive cans. Essentially, they help you uh, create uh, or they, they sort of act as a content assist for, for drawing images. You, you draw a few strokes and the, the, the generator fills it fills the rest of the stuff and makes the real image. There's a YouTube um, video here, but I realized that there might be a lag and you won't be able to see this. But, okay, so, so I mean, there are a couple of papers on picks to picks and cycle GANs recently. And this guy is, is at the, is one of the main contributors to that. And, He's a PhD candidate, and my research goal is to build machines capable of recreating our visual world. So, so all it takes is a dedicated PhD student, and you can see where the things are going. Uh, yeah, so so people have sort of a lot of belief that these generative models can capture the real world uh, artifacts. Okay, yeah, th this is a paper two days, three days old, where very magnificent computational art is being generated by GANs. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, well, th these are ranked by human subjects. So, so human beings actually fail to uh, realize that these are machine generated or not. And these are also different from previously seen art because the way uh, the, the objectives, the, the way gen generation process is set up. Okay, you can generate 3D objects. So, so this, is, this is one of the graphs where yeah, uh, you start from random variable z and you get a chair, a 3D chair and then and all sorts of objects that you can generate. So a lot of it is built upon previous work on, on deep uh, deep learning applied to images uh, and uh, 2D, 3D images. And this very nicely builds upon uh, all of that previous knowledge and extends it to not just uh, previous, most work was discriminative nature. This, this extends it to generative setting. Okay, yeah, medicine is another very uh, popular application stage for GANs, and uh, yeah, uh, so, so the top paper says that uh, CT scan is MRI scans are preferred to CT scan, but you want to get CT scans, so. How can you translate MRI scans to CT scans? And, and yeah, yeah. Medicine in particular is a field where data annotated data is very limited, and and such the ability to generate uh, yeah medical data or snapshots is, is very useful. Okay, so 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 those were the sort of that was the warm up part. Yeah. The, the, a huge number of applications and people coming up with papers every day on on new kind of application or improving the previous generative uh, performance. Okay, so let's dive um, more into how, how how this thing works. So yeah, generator creates a data sample which I call XG. Uh, it's, it takes as input a random variable, a random vector, or uh, yeah. And it generates uh, uh, XG. Uh, discriminator checks if XG is fake. So discriminator is also an adversary. So that, that's where the name get it gets the name. And yeah, so the so discriminator is is sort of the the I mean has has to learn the actual distribution so that it can serve as a adversary to the generator. So discriminator has looked at plenty of images and it knows. Uh, to model the the real distribution pretty well. Uh, based on that, based on the submission XG, it provides some score to it, and and G uses E with a good or bad to create to move XG towards XG prime or refine XG into XG prime, which so that XG prime is more real uh, as compared to XG. And so, so uh, basically, it looks like uh, the generator tries to create stuff, you know. Infinitely, and and D, uh, D just tries to reject everything that it sends, and the tricky part is where G learns to throw stuff which D knows is real, and at that point D D is confused, and uh, yeah, and that's that's where an equilibria arises here. Uh, it's a Nash equilibria, and and uh, the, you can model this stuff on the original paper and the follow-up 
works model model uh, this uh, the dynamics of of cans using using yeah so so there's a overall, uh, overall uh, you know dynamic so we'll get into details of each part so, so i showed you the top part um, yeah Mm. Uh, so the the boxes generator and the discriminator are implemented by neural networks mostly. Uh, the reason being that we are trying to model something very complex, and you can well the neural networks are the best things to approximate such complex distribution. So yeah, you have this. The, the typical input to the generator is Z, which has a distribution PZ, uh, which is a, a typically normal distribution or a uniform distribution, so just a random vector, okay? And that miraculously goes through the generator layers of neural network and create, you get, uh, you know, an output X, which is uh, the fake, fake image, so-called fake image. And the discriminator there sits and evaluates uh, fake and real. So real samples are have already been fed into D and and D learns to classify fake versus real. And there's a feedback part which is hidden in this, but we'll come to it. Yeah. So the, the, the so the static diagram doesn't fully capture the dynamics of 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 of, of this thing. Uh, of, so there's more stuff that happens, and I will come to it slowly. So, so when you're thinking about equilibria in general, uh, metaphors are important because otherwise you break your head, or it hurts very badly. So, uh, yeah. So the popular metaphor that was introduced maybe by the authors and followed up everywhere was that there's a counterfeiter, and there's a forgery checker or a bank or a police, and the counterfeit guy produces a lot of money, tries producing all kinds of uh, variation of monies, uh, which looks very similar to the real money. Sometimes it gets detected, caught, uh, and sometimes it gets through. And the goal is to eventually create something which the police can't detect. So that basically captures the, the overall intuition of uh, what these guys do. Uh, the, the few interesting thing, the, the, if you think about the distribution of, of, of real money or real notes, uh, it's it's pretty hard to characterize and it's pretty hard for anybody to have full information about. So 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 neither has perfect information and just that the police know better about the note than, than this guy. And that's also part of the GAN learning part. So so it's not that discriminator is all knowing, it, the, the D also learns in parallel. And, and the problem with this metaphor is that police doesn't help the counterfeit guy. Um, uh, which, uh, whereas in the in the network that we build, the police actually helps. Uh, well, the, the discriminator actually helps in an indirect way the generator. Okay, so so before we jump to you know dangerous latex symbols and uh, objective functions, uh, some you know flashy code. Uh, interestingly, if you have looked at doing image uh, analysis with neural nets and looked at things like inception and Layer three A, three B, three D. You the, this GAN stuff. Even though it, the dynamics are very complicated, the code is pretty simple and and relatively simple. And yeah, so this guy became famous by showing fifty lines of you know writing GANs in fifty lines of code. Uh, you know, I don't know about them, but if you look at his last name, it's it's a nice permutation of GANs. Okay, so. So here's the code. Uh, generator. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm assuming the the code is is, is a more uh, popular. Well, code maintains high TRPs of any show versus latex symbols. So I decided to uh, show them code first. Yeah. So yeah. So generator and discriminator are a sort of standard looking networks. Okay. And stare at them for a while. The lower part is is where the thing gets combined. So so you take in a Z which is uh, drawn from a you sample it from a uniform distribution. 
create a G sample. Um, X is, is from the real distribution. Uh, you take a real image, okay, and pass it to the discriminator network. You get a probability of, of D real is the, the, the first output is the, the probability of the image being real or not. Okay, so, so both X and G sample go through the network. You get D real and D fake. Okay, and then the bottom line, you compute loss for both the guys. So in contrast to usual classification where we see one loss or one unified loss, where, which is uh, which is the sole, generally the, the single task uh, learning or single task objective function, we have two sort of independent uh, loss functions here, and both of them are trained, used to train the system in an alternating manner. Okay, so so build a D loss, which is it looks like cross entropy loss. I mean, we'll come to how this formula works, right? Yeah. So okay, and, and G loss is so G loss is basically how bad is your fake example. D loss, discriminator loss, is is how well it knows the real stuff and how well it knows the fake stuff from the real stuff. That's the two part. Okay, yeah, so the top is the same as what I showed. And so after you have these laws, you stand, you just, you create two optimizers. So this is standard TensorFlow code, and, uh, but basically captures the idea. Uh, yeah, there's, there's more stuff going on. The val list equals theta d and theta g is what I'll come to. And then basically the two, the key important parts are how do you write the losses? How do you uh, capture that, those losses? And then at the bottom, how do you train? Okay, so. Okay, so the bottom training, uh, you train the discriminator and the generator alternately. Um, this is just one way in which these things are trained, but uh, uh, you, that's that's the uh, general style. Yeah, so I got the question from Monu. Uh, does G start with shape of the distribution, or it searches across all possible distribution? So, so it, it does search across all. So, uh, so first of all, it takes as input a random. Uh, vector and uh, it's a uniform distribution you know the whole span of it so and it converts that random vector into an object of the distribution so so based on this translation wherever those random vectors translated that's what the output is and and then uh, yeah once it proposes stuff to the discriminator this is a huge space and once it proposes stuff to the discriminator the discriminator scores it the score is low the, the generator know where the which direction it should move to increase the score. So how should it improve the uh, the, the currently generated image? Uh, so the Z remains same, but the internal network changes so that the next image that is generated is, is better falls towards the right distribution. Okay, so so that's what and and to get. To improve this, it gets gradients from the discriminator. So the discriminator helps it uh, uh, improve the, the images. Yeah, I, I am not sure whether that explanation was was good enough, but we'll we'll come to the same point several times. So this is, uh, or should I? Okay, great. Okay, so so this more code in this is in PyTorch, and uh, or is it in yeah? So yeah, so so Ali, you saw the well, maybe you should. We don't need to. The difference being that you Ali, you saw the objective function as written from scratch, whereas you could use just binary cross entropy loss right here, and uh, that would you can just use that. Uh, as a black box and build the same objective functions. Okay, so and uh, you know there are different ways you can train stuff. You can 
um, you can just pass the real real image through the discriminator, get the error, and back propagate it. And you can do this separately for real and fake fake images. Uh, the previous uh, yeah, previous code did both at the same time. So there are plenty of variations here, and especially you know alt strict alternation between discriminator and generator may not be there. You know you you train the, some some works train the discriminator. Uh, for a couple of epochs and then switch to the generator. And there is, uh, yeah, uh, there is, uh, so the, overall the idea is that, you know, the discriminator should know the real distribution, at least uh, uh, to a decent extent. Otherwise, if it starts scoring generators images uh, randomly without knowing where the actual distribution lies. This this game, it's already complex game. It will, will re, re, the start the the training would never be stable. You won't be able to converge anywhere. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I'll. So I'm going to now talk more deeply about the objectives and how exactly I mean, these objectives play with each other, but. Yeah, at this point, if, if there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer. No question, that's also fine. Uh, Yeah, so maybe I'll just continue and somebody you know thinks of a question, you can just type type it in the live chat. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, so so in terms of objectives, both the guys try to work on the same objective, which is represented as V uh, DG. Uh, and the generator tries to minimize that objective while the discriminator tries to maximize the same object. Okay, and what does V consist of? It consists of the you know error in the true part when you when you're sending the real images to it, and and the second part is uh, is the error in the in the fake part. Basically, anything that comes from the generator should be classified as fake. That that's what the strategy of discriminator. Okay, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'll let it be at that. The, those, I mean, yeah, if, so for example, if you get a real image, D of X should be close to one. Okay, and that log of one is, is, uh, is zero. Otherwise, uh, for anything less than one, the log of that is negative. So it tries to maximize that. Okay, and similarly, one minus D, uh, it tends to, Okay, you want to be this value to be as large as possible because uh, d in the d should classify a fake image as as close to zero, and so uh, that that should be again it should be as close to zero the the log of it. Okay, and in practice, this this. Uh, um, this nice form doesn't uh, doesn't uh, help train well and instead the, the thing that's written at the top where instead of log 1 minus d uh, people use minus of, of log d and that that helps give better gradients to the disk uh, to the generator okay so we could distill the objectives but you know I I'm not sure how much of it is is Clear to the audience, uh, yeah. So, so broadly, uh, yeah. The, the arrow show um, so for the true images it wants to push that up, and for the fake images it wants to pull that down. The the generator is doing exactly the opposite. It wants to push up 
what the generator, what the discriminator. So G wants to push up what the D wants to pull down. Okay. Uh, the question is, do you have any handy trained log graph? Uh, you probably want to see the the loss graph. Yeah, so I have it in, on one of the slides, and one of the problems with this this whole thing is that those those uh, the loss function doesn't is not uh, informative. I mean, you 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 don't learn. Uh, so looking at that, you don't know when the model is going to converge, and and that's that's one of the problems of it, which which I'll come to. Okay, uh, so second, can something other than log be used? Right, so, so the original work, uh, original paper, uh, model this thing as, uh, uh, yeah, try to, uh, okay, so so the, the, the problem, the, the distribution-based interpretation of this game is that uh, you're trying to reduce the divergence between the actual distribution of image and the generator's created distribution. Okay, so you're trying to diff. I'll just call this diff. The diff between the actual distribution and the generator is you want to minimize it so that the generator gets to the real distribution. And the particular version of diff that they were using is is, is JS divergence, Jensen Shannon divergence, which uh, which which is uh, improvement on KL, KL divergence. And again, there's a bunch of uh, theory of diffing probability distributions involved there. Uh, yeah, so, and that that brings the log in there. And uh, there the, are the, the lot of issues with, with that kind of diffing. And so, so people have proposed new kinds of diffing uh, where the log goes away and, and you just get squares, mean square error kind of, kind of object. So, so yes, the short answer is that yeah, log can go away and you can get, uh, so there are better objectives or better in working in practice objectives, which which have mean square error kind of uh, expressions rather than the log. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so uh, minimize KL divergence. Uh, that, that question is a bit difficult for me to interpret. Yeah, so how are the parameters of for the G defined? Guess the parameters of G which are tuned based on the Yeah, so the parameters are uh, okay, putting it simply uh, G performs an upsampling from a random vector Z to an image. Okay, so if you have looked at you've seen networks which upsample from yeah, from from compressed latent representations, uh, you know, autoencoders or segmentation. Yeah, I mean, there's the, the upsamplers and deconvolution. Essentially, G is a, a, has a bunch of deconvolution layers, and I have an image somewhere, but I'm not sure where it is. Yeah, so so the standard uh, de deconvolution network you could imagine, and uh, the parameters, a bunch of parameters, a bunch of layers there. Yeah, so so classes. Uh, the question is, but if there are multiple classes, then so uh, so the date the, the the this generation process as I've described till now is is uh, is independent of classes. It, 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 it's uh, oblivious of classes. It just tries to generate any data from the whole distribution. You can bring in classes, and you can try to force or control the generation to you know I, I input. Number one, you generate me an MNIST image one, and similarly, so there are ways of, to control this generator uh, or generation process. But till now, the the generation is oblivious of of classes. Okay, so so I'll continue now. So we are nine forty five, and uh, let's see what I can cover. If, so if the the basic idea of yeah, so so maybe I'll just. Uh, reiterate the whole story in, in another style. Um, yeah, so the right hand side shows a diagram where, you know, first you train the 
the disc discriminator. You pass in the X, you get the scores, uh, you want to uh, get all of them once for, for all the real images. Okay. Uh, yeah, in the, in the next part, uh, yeah, so that's for the real images. This, the second vertical is about the fake images. So you pass in Z to, to G, you get a fake image, which is X double dot. And, and that X double dot is passed to the discriminator and you want the discriminator to learn a zero for it. And, and uh, so, so and during the second vertical, G stays constant. D is the one, the parameters of D chain, G stay, stay the same. Okay, so so yeah, it's a sort of alternating optimization. Okay, and once uh, so 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 you know it's it's like when uh, at, at, in one iteration D comes in and tries to you know throw away or, or score uh, yeah reject all the the samples that the current G G provides, and in the next iteration D goes to sleep, G wakes up. And G tries to again, you know, build up its sample, uh, make make samples better. So, so the the second vertical has G frozen, and the third vertical has D frozen. And that's how the whole thing works. And that part leads to instability because G can uh, what D pulls down in one iteration, G can pull it up, or, or something different, which again D will pull down in the next iteration. And yeah, so this is one of the graphs from yeah, from the original paper or somewhere close by. Yeah, so so this is just an intuitive map. So you have this random distribution of Z and that gets focused onto a particular region of X or particular region of the manifold of X, which is the real distribution. And then the data and the model distribution are brought closer slowly. Yeah, it takes a while to understand the the, the dynamics fully and this, this is what you can see the um, yeah so earlier z all the z's were pointed to a, a wrong region of the distribution so the, the peak was the green peak was different from the black peak and slowly with learning the all the z's were pointed to the right part and at the point and then the last point that the d is confused and so, so it's its output is, is 0.5 everywhere, the same everywhere, because it, it doesn't know how to uh, score the good ones from the bad ones. Yeah, this is just another graph. This is got from somebody's training. Uh, yeah, so so Z, all the we're starting from a uniform distribution Z, it can uh, it can map to different places in the X depending on uh, what the discriminator tells you. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So that's the basic uh, intuition plus a little bit of formalism around GANs. Uh, yeah. So, you know, people find it when things get complex. People find it easier to classify humanity and, and uh, rather than classifying GANs. So, so this is a quote from one of the you know, uh, yeah, very uh, popular contributors. So. There are two types of GAN researchers, one that applies GAN in interesting problems, and one that attempts to stabilize the training. So essentially, it's a very nice summary of, of the of two streams of work that, yeah, so the bunch of applications like the ones I showed in the beginning, are generating images, transforming images from one domain to another, generating 3D stuff, interactive uh, GANs, and then the problem of, of these objectives, these are the, the the KL divergence based objectives are, are have been shown to be really bad uh, towards helping convergence and uh, uh, there have been several improvements on, on that. So, so the, 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 the background theory is based on minimax games and equilibria, Nash equilibria and minimax games. Uh, and yeah, if we had time, we'll go through all of that, but uh yeah but i'll i'll just yeah this is a very cheeky note by again one of the popular uh, you know blog writers and uh, and researcher so i hope you guys can read stuff 
Okay, well, while you read stuff, I will try to answer the question. Where does the translation from text to images happen in one of the... It happens in the generator. So you, you uh, with that particular approach, uh, uses an RNN to encode the text into a you know, compressed representation. And that compressed representation is, is passed to the, uh, to the generator along with Z. So, so, so the things called conditional GANs, and I might be jumping all over the place now. So things called conditional GANs, where you, like you're asking about classes earlier, right? Where the class come. So, so you condition the GAN. So besides Z, there is also a class variable, which, which forces GAN to generate a particular kind of objects. So here, the particular kind of objects depend on the text and, and um, um, yeah. So I hope that answer. So the translation from text to images happens inside the generator, which is fed in both Z and an encoded representation of text. Yeah. Yeah. Comments on the recent work, which combines GANs and VAE. So, so the retort I have is one recent work or plenty of recent. So uh, uh, yeah, VAEs, uh, although I haven't talked about, have a, like auto encoders, encoder and decoder stage, okay? And the generator is essentially the decoder and discriminator is the, you know, if you will, encoder or compressor. Yeah, so so there are, there appear to be very deep similarities between both and, and so people have tried to unify these models in, in 100 different ways. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, whether a uh, grand unification has been achieved or not, that I don't know. But uh, yeah, so 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 one one unifying view is that you can view this whole system, uh, generator plus uh, discriminator, as as a giant auto encoding system where you take as input the the domain. So so you input s uh, s is equal to zero means uh, you get the real images s equal to one means the fake images okay and so 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 this s variable the domain tossing operator is, is the input and the whole generator uh, you get the real images from somewhere generator creates the fake images there the whole thing gets auto encoded and and at the end you want to output ones for the real images and and uh, zeros for the fake images and and so so if you if you view this whole system as a giant auto encoder you can you can add in the classes there and that will work. And so there, there is a recent paper which, which tries to combine all of them uh, as, a, as a giant auto encoder and of which, you know, GANs and VAs are particular instances. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm probably hand waving a lot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so as I have one question, but yeah, this, if you can pass this paragraph, you're awesome. Um, but I'll just focus on pinches of salt and slice of lemon. Okay. So, so, so two issues. One is mode collapse. Basically, generator tries to generate images of a single kind. Wherever discriminator says one, it jump, jumps toward generating all of images of that. So that way it loses diversity. Diversity is important because otherwise you don't capture. And also that leads to you know, oscillation or uh, you know, trying to, it finds one peak and then the discriminator pulls it down and then it finds another peak and then again, it, so the right diagram shows that it can oscillate among the different peaks and not converge anywhere. Okay, and, and this is, is a graph for the loss function. This one particular run, uh, somebody was, uh, Abhishek, I think, right? Was asking for, yeah. So, so you can look at this graph. The, the, the blue one is the discriminator loss, and green is generative loss, and it doesn't tell you anything. Okay, um, yeah. So it, it, one, one, one feature that you can see is points D becomes higher at the same time G becomes low. So that's where the D is winning, and then it goes back. G wins, and 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 eventually something happens. So, so. In absence of the loss function as being a metric for, for convergence or the quality, people end up you know, manually looking at the images if you're trying to generate images and, 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 um, uh, and seeing whether 
are generated. That's how almost all of the image-based GAN research has happened. And uh, one metric is that, OK, earlier we could generate 32 by 32 images. Now we are at uh, 128 by 128 or 256 by 250. And high quality images are hard to generate still. And so it's a, yeah, so, so there is like a, you know, research happening in a open football field. And you know everything that is happening, but nobody, uh, with, without any goals being you know, made. So, so, so there's plenty of stuff happening, but it's, it's really hard to figure out uh, which way things are going. Yeah. And uh, this also, this inversion. we don't have the latent variable. We start from a latent variable Z and generate the thing, but we don't have a direct way of going back from X to Z. And there's several works which, which try to do this process from X to Z uh, in a, a, a model that has a separate optimization problem. OK, yeah, so this is another funny slide, which I, yeah, the bunch of papers, one after another. And this guy has implemented probably some of them. And unfortunately, mode collapse, collapsing is not going away soon. Yeah, and this is another view of the whole world. This guy is called Vice Odd, very aptly named. And there are, he has implemented a bunch of them. And most of them, I believe, are running on MNIST. Anything more complicated than that? Needs special effort. There are, there are plenty of works which do that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so this is a comment from Pix to Pix paper, which which suddenly which which brought which became very popular uh, because its ability to produce accurate translation, good translation. So GANs have been vigorously studied. That the phrase vigorously is very, uh, you know, very feel the learn can kind. Yeah. So uh, you might have gone through lots of related words section, but this particular adjective is, 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 is sort of scarce to find. Yeah. And many of these techniques we explore in this paper have been previously proposed. So, so, so everything happened in the last two years, and we are brave to propose another one. And, and still, that thing is very popular. OK, good. So OK, I have, so Wasserstein GANs were proposed to, uh, um, to, to counter the instability brought by KL divergence or GS division based objectives. And essentially, yeah. OK, I had another analogy, but I just jumped through it. OK, what's the steam GANs? What is this? So here's a you know, quick and dirty summary. So in the vanilla GANs, you had these logs. In the steam GANs, you know, there's a pretty deep theoretical foundation that they build there. Uh, for comparing distributions, for differing distributions. And with, with some simplifications, the code becomes really, really simple. And you, you almost, yeah. So, so the, the, the new loss is just the difference uh, of, of, the, of the two, uh, two scores. So instead of thinking of, of output of D being a probability value, uh, you try to, you, uh, think of them as a score given to the the image, and you try to reduce the score. The bunch of uh, yeah, the bunch of uh, uh, constraints on the function type discriminator has, which uh, uh, yeah, which essentially, which which at least these guys model by clipping the so you so your all the parameters in the discriminator should be bounded in a particular way, and that makes the whole thing work uh, magically. And obviously, that's a, a sort of contrived assumption. And, and then the world moved on. And this is pretty much uh, what's happening in the last in the last few five months of this, uh, this six, six months of this year. Yeah, so so, so somebody improved that basic was sustained by, by bounding the gradients. And then somebody's come up with the Kramer distance. And the same was. So, so, so we have a very unstable distance metric right now. And, and that's the beauty of the of the football stadium. Okay, and there are a bunch of other people who have tried to impose conditions for equilibria as a separate formula and so on. Yeah. So, so plenty of work trying to get things stable. Uh, I, we are ten. I'll just you know take many seconds to go through the applications. These applications are, uh, or maybe I should just pause and and ask for any questions at this point. 
there's so so like that comment you know there are two kinds of people in this world who one first kind try to stabilize gans second kind are creative and produce new applications and these applications are uh, are slight modifications of the basic gan architecture you add maybe inputs to different layers you slightly modify objectives add new regularization uh, you know for uh, constraints and and yeah and each of these uh, as opposed to the basic gan you know theory and uh, implementation each of these requires some ingenuity to to uh, to get them to work Yeah, so I'm waiting for questions you can throw in or I'm, um, yeah. Uh, Jacob, so what do you think? We are, we should stop, we should continue. Uh, I think if there are no more questions, then uh, yeah. But we can give, I think, one more minute for questions. Okay, yeah. yeah. Anybody awake at this hour? Yeah, so anybody thinks of it, uh, yeah, please throw your questions. Yeah, so uh, the, 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 the network that I showed you in the beginning was the basic uh, fully connected several layers. Uh, to get it working for images, uh, people were stuck with MNIST for a long time before this particular paper came through. And uh, essentially, uh, this is generator which has a bunch of decon layers to get the. So the generator is, is you know, uses the, it builds upon the, the 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 standard practices which we have learned uh, in the class, image classification network. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, so I have the last question. Okay. Go ahead. So I uh, always wonder about the biological plausibility of uh, GANs. So uh, since we always had uh, an explanation from uh, the biological brain for neural networks, mm -hmm. uh, this kind of question uh, is interesting to me. So what do you think about the uh, biological plausibility of uh, GANs? Yeah so, yeah, so I can't think of biological but but the, the turing test basically that there is an oracle and uh, the, the generator uh, creates stuff which which it has to pass through the the oracle and that's how you learn stuff i mean uh, if you want you know you can extend this analogy to a child learning from a teacher and yeah and yeah i mean uh, yeah there are plenty of uh, maybe social <laughs> Uh, instances of this this uh, this style of learning where you know whenever there is a, a student versus a, a teacher kind of setting uh, the student tries to fake stuff until it gets it right so-called fake stuff okay Mithun wants to finish the slides very quickly I'm not sure if that answer satisfied you Jacob but yeah that's how yeah, okay. yeah. thanks yeah yeah, so DC GANs, uh, pretty good image. I think they were 128 by 128. And they were able to do some arithmetic on top of these images, like the word 2x time. And then conditional GANs, I've talked about these earlier. Uh, yeah, so you, you condition the GAN by something that reflects a class. And this is this particular network is for text, but the next one should be the general architecture. Yeah. So besides Z, you also pass in a Y vector, which is the which is indicative of the of the class or the features that you want uh, to be captured. So each 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 component of Y is a particular feature that you know should be there, and you you bias the generator and the discriminator simultaneously, so that you, the, the object generated and checked belong to that distribution. So that way you can you can change it from male to female. You can you can add the sunglasses and remove the sunglasses. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, and InfoGANs are a particular kind of conditional GANs where with, with even less supervision. The previous one, you needed the labels. This one, you can get away with very minimal kind of labels. And uh, so, so it's interesting to see these architectures being evolving and how, in many cases, what happens is that one architecture comes up with a supervised version of it, and the other one tries to slightly weaken it or uh, and, and, uh, get a more getting more towards an unsupervised way of learning. Yeah, so, so I mean, if it wasn't clear, we are working in a fully unsupervised domain uh, where we just know images from the real domain, but uh, nothing else. And we're trying to capture that distribution. OK, so yeah. And then there is a wonderful paper by which has one Christopher Ola as one of the authors, where you, are, you can make beautiful variations of this architecture where it's hard to figure out where the arrows are pointing after a while and what the diffs are. The last one, AC GAN, is, is what where the things have converged in terms of condition GANs. People use this architecture most, I think. Yeah, stack GANs are the ones where which give you best resolutions. Uh, they, and they, it's not just GANs, it's, uh, the two layers, who first where you generate some images, and then the second layer, which improves the resolution of it. So there's a concatenation of and that, this is the architecture producing the best, uh, uh, highest quality image. And pix to pix is doing the translation. Again, here the generator is, is like the segmentation network, UNet, and that's what it helps to translate. The discriminator is, is not just a simple zero one, you think called patch can, where you look at multiple pixels to classify. Okay, there are a bunch of other stuff which yeah which will be eventually put in there um, yeah so this, you can read the title of this paper which is which should satisfy some of your <laughs> needs for unifying autoencoding and autoencoders and, and and gans with the versus team effect there are plenty of papers uh, people being creative and uh, it's actually a pretty good paper in the way it combines autoencoders and but yeah, things haven't converged to the point that we can classify and tax this taxonomy of, of these creative models yet. So yeah, so I've been vigorous research in GANs. I really love that adjective. Um, plenty of like the uh, you know the image, like the standard uh, AI research. Uh, yeah. Uh, the plenty of open source implementation blogs explaining tricky stuff from uh, GANs and games and and was this was this team, um, objective and yeah so vision is where most focus has been text generation people have tried uh, there was a very nice uh, yeah uh, um, what do you call it sort of controversy around the text generation stuff uh, yeah, but people haven't really got a hold on it. Uh, yeah, and convergence stability still remains elusive while they, they get, keep getting breaking news once in a while. Yeah, and unified we're getting there slowly. There are a bunch of, yeah, but unless you know something gets widely accepted, we can't say we are done. Okay, good. So I have managed to finish my slides. Only 10 minutes late. Yeah, uh, go ahead if there are any questions. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Nishan, for this great session. Thank you for supporting, holding. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for staying alive till this hour.